Check this out. Beautiful. Damn, I'm so good at technology. Fuck. That's embarrassing how good I am. It's embarrassing for all of you, as a matter of fact. What's up, Gmails? How are you doing today, brother? Um, what's going on? I haven't even said hi to you, and you're like 15 feet away from me right now. Um, yeah. So today, I was thinking. I was thinking about the various things that we could get into. In terms of talking about production, diving into stuff together. Um... And what came to mind as I was working on the sample challenge for this last week, working on my beat, I was like, you know what would be really cool is if we just used, we challenged ourselves, or I challenged myself, <coughs> excuse me, to only use Ableton stock plugins and only use sounds from the samples themselves. So like no, I'm going to turn the volume off on my synth, no synth, no uh, nothing. Just just using samples, just using audio from the two samples that were submitted. And I was going to challenge myself to see if I could actually do that live on stream. Make something that isn't really stinky for you guys. And in the process, show you how I kind of do things. So that was the, um, the animating thing for today. Now, I know not all of you are going to be on Ableton, so I apologize. This is going to translate to... Definitely Ableton users, but the point of using stock plugins here and the point of using the tools that are available in Ableton is to show you because most DAWs have all of this stuff built into them already. Logic does as well, I know for sure. Uh, FL Studio has different versions of all of the same stuff. Um, the idea here is just kind of like show you what is available to you without having to spend a single dollar or euro or whatever currency you use on something else, uh, on, on a plugin or external equipment or anything like that, which I think is always a really useful reminder. And I certainly enjoy being reminded time and time again that that shit is really important, um, that you can do so much with just what's already in your DAW. So, yeah. So that's what I was thinking. Um, definitely want to hear from you guys if there is anything else that you're curious about. I'm actually going to open this up right now. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to see... Uh, if I can address them while I'm making beats today. So, ooh, um, let me know if there's anything open forum, guys. Like, just throw some questions in the chat if you have any, anything that you'd want to pick my brain about or just, like, want to go over or, like, see someone do uh, a different way. Uh, I'll try to incorporate that into uh, making beats today. But um, besides that, yeah, we're going we're gonna to dive in in just a second here. And write down my little to-do list here. Make sure these rules are followed. So, okay, so the rules. I'm just going to go over them for myself here. Because, like, rules and constraints are really good for creativity, I think. Oh, all right, Gabe. That's a great question. G420. Um, the top three best Ableton plugins. Obviously, this is an opinion here. Um, I'm a big fan of Saturator. Saturator's a goat. What's up, Suna? How are you? What's up, Landisi? What's going on? Um, we're talking best three Ableton plugins. My, my favorites. If we, we, we can see them over here, actually. Fuck, this is hard. Um, okay. My favorites are Tuner, <laughs> Utility, no. Um, I would say... EQ, man, it's hard to even choose between these two. I love EQ3. Um, I'm going to go with, fuck, this is really hard. Drum bus is up there for sure. No question. Absolutely up there. Drum bus is amazing. Auto filter I use in every song just by, as a guarantee. Um, let me open them up. So, yeah, what do we got? Drum bus, auto filter. Saturator is amazing. I don't know if it's quite top three. Um, utility. I use utility all the time. But I don't know if it's like the coolest or the best. Um, I would say the other one is probably Echo. Echo is really sick. You can do a lot of really cool shit with Echo. A lot of cool like sound design stuff. It's just like they kind of came for Echo Boy and Sound Toys Echo Boy if you guys have ever used that. But 
fucking amazing. Um, yeah, Echo's really cool. And I feel like I've only scratched the surface with Echo, but you can do shit with it. Like you can you can add noise and kind of have like some RC20 style stuff going on. Like, there you go. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Um, but that might be, yeah, maybe Grand Delay. But that's more of a Gabe thing. But yeah, that's probably that's probably my my three. Um. Yeah, they're crazy. They're crazy, crazy. I'm gonna hit up the chat. Um, glue, yeah, glue compressor, also an amazing plugin. Although I don't use it, I don't use it like a ton. I've never had like the greatest taste for the the SSL G bus compressor, which is what this is based on. But it is, it does sound good. It's just, I don't know. It doesn't like work the way that I like m like many compressors to work. I don't know. It's like, it's not, it doesn't like have the sound that I have often in my head when I think of compression. So that's a personal thing though. It is widely lauded and, and absolutely great plugins based on a, a, a hardware plugin or a hardware uh, unit that was built into the SSL desks uh, from the 80s onward. So it's, uh, the, the sound of this has hit so many hit records. It's crazy. I'm gonna catch up with you guys. Um, yeah, auto filter, absolutely crazy. You can do so much with it. I do a lot of sound design with it, um, especially using like the envelope and the LFO, like being able to move the filter up and down. That shit's crazy. Um, and just having it like follow like this circular pattern, so you can kind of get these like cool, like rhythmic effects on just about anything using the auto filter. And I can show you guys an example of that while I'm playing, so let's see. Auto, filter, LFO. Um, yeah, Simpler, Simpler's dope. Actually, Cosmico, you and I were talking about Simpler yesterday. Um, it came up because we were both working on like, how can we how can we affect sounds as much as possible using Simpler? That's just crazy. It's, um, it's extremely powerful. And I will be using Simpler largely uh, to create this beat that I am about to create. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully there's some interesting nuggets in there for you. But yeah, Rumi, use the API 2500. Hell yeah, I love that compressor. I had one of those at school, and we'd always use it for like drum overheads and anything that was stereo that needed to just get kind of crushed. And man, that shit sounds so good. And Waves, I know, has a, has a clone, and UAD has a clone, and both of them are different but really really good it's super cool selaz what's going on man how are you welcome 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 they should come out with eq1 i feel like that's uh i feel like that's auto filter though like this is just a, it's a one band eq you know it's just uh just that's it it's just one band i think uh logic does have like an actual one band eq like i think it's just called like single band eq and it's basically that, it's a filter. Um, that's kind of dope. It's kind of dope. I'm good, Salas, thanks for asking, man. How's everyone in the chat doing? I know you probably have already answered that question to some degree, but that's all good. How's everyone doing? It's fucking, it's Monday. It's a great day. Monday's my favorite day of the week, you know why? Because it's the start of the work week and I got that grind set 24 seven, but especially on Mondays because Everyone around me is also working, and I love that energy. So it's so true. All right. So yeah, those are my favorite pluggies. Now, um, as I, I'm gonna get started on this in just a second. But as I do, um, if you guys have any questions at all, I invite you to type them in the chat. If you're curious about how anything is working. Um, please let me know because this is really uh, this is for you guys. I was just hoping that this would be something. I'm sure this is something you guys are gonna gain a lot from. Um, but uh, but on the off chance you have some like totally unrelated question, I'll try to peek over and uh, and and answer it for you. So hell yeah, that's what's up. Great stream, great week, baby. I love it. All right, so I'm gonna move over here. Let's listen to the samples that were provided for us uh, from Snow G and Rumi. So this was uh, this was Snow G. Hit us with this. Uh, let me 
set my levels right. He hit us with this banger uh, of a drum sample. Now, I have taken the liberty of editing it down a little bit, but this is how it goes. Well, maybe I should take off all these plugins. There we go. Ooh! God damn. So crispy. Love it. Banger. Banger, dude. So I already know that everybody's flip is going to be great because if you're using those drums, you just, you kind of can't lose. Like we said on the last stream, me and Nathan, when we were going through the showcase uh, entries for, for March, dude, drums are kind of everything. Um, like if you have banging drums, you can get away with a lot and you can get away with like a stinkier beat, a smellier beat because if your drums are, are just, or if they're banging, that's what people want to hear. It gets people moving, you know? Um, I think drums, you know, once you start to nail down your drums as a producer, that's when everything else sort of starts to fall into place. Um, it's just, yeah, I don't know from my experience. But then there's also great drumless beats too, so don't listen to me. All right. Um, Rumi sent in this sample. Um, I'm going to unwarp it so it's just at its original tempo here. Um, it was around like 94 BPM, I guess. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Super funky. Jeez. Hell yeah. It's crazy. Really cool mix of instruments. It's just dope. I was very, very pleasantly surprised to hear how this all uh, came together. And, and the stuff, the high quality samples that you guys sent in were just like, it was crazy. So of course, you know, naturally, you could do one of these and call it a beat, right? And it's a pretty bang, that's like done. That's done, that's all you really need. Of course. We're all doing this together. We can't be doing that. We can't be, we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's not, that's not necessarily creative, original, you know. These guys provided some great samples to us. We got to honor them by doing something crazy to them. And that's what we're here to do. Um, so using these as the raw material, as the inspiration, where can we go from here? Of course. Now, because Rumi, because your sample, you said it's guitar, bass, Rhodes, and poly D. Sounds great. That's basically all you need for a beat arrangement, right? You've got the bass, you've got the harmony, you've got a little bit of a melody, and then we've got the drums from Snow G. Like, we're good, more or less. So, I don't know. I want to, as I'm working on this today, I'm just going to get into a little bit of a flow. I want to see what we can do by throwing these things into simpler in Ableton. And let me get rid of this here. Yeah, throwing these things into simpler and just kind of seeing what other sounds we can tease out of these samples using this Ableton device. So let's see. Oh, and by the way, a refresher on the rules for last week, um, which I also intend to follow. We had to use both samples in some conspicuous way. And then we also had to create two musically distinct sections, like an A and a B, or however you want to look at it, verse, chorus, you know, you, you could chorus, hook, or whatever. However you want to define it, but two musically different sections. So we're not just stuck in, okay, here's my one loop, and that's it. The goal was to try to challenge ourselves to create two different energy levels or two different... Um, you know, sort of whatever, two different sections and tie them together, transition between them. So create two musically distinct sections. 
could be intro, chorus, what have you. Awesome. What's up, Afro Ham? What's going on? How are you? Welcome, welcome. All right. I think we're all caught up. Sick. All right, guys. So using both samples and creating two musically distinct sections. All right, so what I want to do here is I'm going to I'm going to see what I can't do with this. I'm just going to set a loop over here. With this um Let's see. Let me just label these here. Drums, music loop. Cool. See what I can't do with this like music loop here. So I've just loaded it into simpler, just completely raw. And it's gonna slowly fade out over time. If uh, if you haven't used simpler before, basically what it's doing is it's just playing the sample based on you know the parameters that you set here. So I've got a 60 second release, which basically means once I hit this, what's gonna happen is yeah, it's such a good sample. It's got that very like funky, like almost like G funky, super sick. It's it's gonna have this like this long 60 second tail. Of course, the sample's not 60 seconds long, so it's gonna take a, a while to get there, and it's ultimately still gonna have some volume left on the tail before uh, when the sample finishes. So that's good to know, because if we pull the release down, for example, we can create these sorts of like one shots essentially and then as we play around the keyboard we can change the key because naturally that's the default state of Ableton simpler and also Logic's Q sampler as well works like this and so you'll notice that as I play around the pitch is going to change uh, as it tracks where I'm playing the keys on the keyboard and it's also going to change the speed as the pitch goes up the speed is going to follow so if I play an octave up from C, from C3. Obviously it speeds up a little bit, which is pretty funny. Now, here's something cool that I have messed with a few times. If you drag the end point of the sample really close to the start, and then put the start somewhere where there's some audio here, Let's see, let's actually, let's zoom in really far. We can see how this has like a little bit of a, a cool little like waveform there. This, this section here. And if we zoom in really far, and we just have like this little section here, I'll click the snap. This basically just means that it's going to snap the beginning of the sample to a zero crossing, which basically means when the amplitude is zero here. So where this amplitude line crosses the zero, it's going to snap it to that. Which basically means you're not going to get any clicks. Kind of crazy. You can hear just this little, this little like snippet. Now listen to what happens when we turn on the loop. What this is going to do is basically keep playing the sample. Oops. It's going to keep playing the sample after I let go. So it's got this really weird, like glitchy sound. But you'll notice as I go up in pitch, so if I go all the way up here, it kind of takes its own, like it has its own pitch. Kind of crazy. So what we're actually doing right here is we're doing this thing called granular synthesis, where we're actually taking just a really, really short snippet of audio from an original sample. And we're basically treating it like it's a single cycle of a waveform, say like a sine wave or a saw wave or a square wave, which would look like this. Um, it's like a single cycle of a waveform. And so we're turning this into the raw material of basically a synthesizer. This is we're treating this as an oscillator. So it's a really roundabout way of basically taking sounds from a sample, and then actually using it to create something else that's musical. So So let me see, first of all, if this is in tune, which is probably not. It is not. So what I'm going to do is transpose it. Here we go. That sounds like a 
it's in tune beautiful cool so we have this like synth sound it's kind of like organy i guess um it's got that sort of like a digital sort of it's kind of a weird not super analog or natural sounding thing it's got that crunchy sort of overtone which is pretty typical of granular synthesis hell yeah silly this is how you made the pad in your beat hell yeah love that you're up on this this is a it's such a fun way to create new sounds because it's like you're basically guaranteed to choose a grain of a sample that no one else has ever used before super sick um, and you kind of develop a little bit of ownership over it which is which is fun i think it, it helps you know it helps you like kind of really more or less like fall in love with the sounds that you're using because it's not just some preset that somebody else made it's like you made this super fun so um this is what we got here now i want to make this poly like i want to be able to play a chord on it so if i go down to the voices here this is going to determine how many voices can play at the same time in other words how many notes it can generate at the same time so i'll bring that up to something like 10. that's just going to be more than enough and now i can play i can play notes i'm also going to pull down the volume here just in case that's a little bit too loud cool so there i have uh the ability to play notes and now let's let's mess with the the envelope here so this is the ADSR, the Amplitude Envelope, Attack, Decay, Sustain, Release. If anyone's not familiar, this will be a nice little crash course. So I've got a slow attack here. This gives you a little bit more of like a pad sound. You know? That's pretty cool. You can slow it down even more. Pitch it up. Something like that. You can get some like string sounds coming out of it. So what I want to do now is kind of create a really, um, what do I want to do? I want to do like a kind of, yeah, like a liquidy sort of pad with not a lot of high end. As a matter of fact, I want to do something sort of like sine wavy. Maybe I'll transpose up another octave. usable range of the keyboard so I'm gonna shave off I'm gonna open up the filter over here and I'm gonna shave down some of those high frequencies it sounds like some are sneaking through every once in a while which I don't really understand why Yeah, like right there. Maybe that's just a glitch in Ableton, because that shouldn't. So it sounds like every other one. Every other chord I play that's happening. Weird. Well, who cares? All right, it's, it's better now. Just change the number of voices. Cool. All right, we're good. Ableton does some shit like that sometimes. I don't know. Cool, nice. It's got this, yeah, it's got this like video gamey kind of sound to it too, which might have something to do with like the digital quality of, of the granular stuff. Um, but it definitely has that sort of like, I don't know, that like early Mario 60, like Super Mario 64 type sound, I guess. So over here, actually, I should explain what I'm doing here. I also want to create a vibrato. And vibrato is basically, it's like when the pitch wavers, you know, if like a singer is holding out a note for a long time, it's like you hear them land on a pitch and then, uh, and they kind of have this like wavering quality. That's vibrato. And that usually represents a change in the pitch, um, which you can modulate with an LFO very easily here in Simpler. So if I turn on the LFO here, as indicated by the yellow square, I'm going to choose a sine wave. It's usually the most natural sound. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it to the pitch here. So you can hear how that's slowly modulating the pitch by a small amount. If I raise up the pitch, it goes apeshit. Don't need that. 
Yeah, it's super creepy, especially if you play lower down. Like. Crazy. Now, what happens if I actually, if I pull up the pitch here? Or I'm sorry, if I pull up the, the rate of the LFO. Because now it's at one hertz, which means that every second it's going to go through a full cycle. It's going to go from bottom to top to bottom, like this wave that's going on. So like, this is what it's doing right now. Now if I make that faster, say somewhere around like six hertz. Yeah, you get more of that natural vibrato effect. Still kind of creepy sounding, but it's super cool. Now, what you can also do is you can set an attack time. This is something I really love that, that Simpler has. Set an attack time. So this basically means that once a key is triggered, it's going to describe how long it takes for the LFO to go from zero amplitude to full amplitude. So it's going to take a minute for or however long we want it to, to go from not changing the pitch at all to changing the pitch at the described percentage, so 4.45%. It's just how long does it take for it to get to that uh, full full value. So I find that if I set it up to somewhere around like, I don't know, like half a second to like one and a half seconds, depending on the music, it gives me just a moment where the sample is going to be played without any vibrato, so you land on the pitch and then the vibrato is going to begin. Awesome. You can hear how it comes in a little bit later there as I raise the attack. So let's see if I go around 1.3 seconds. Beautiful. You can hear how it's and then it comes in. A great way to create a natural sounding, organic sounding synthesizer out of what is basically like a tiny snippet of, uh, I think, a bass from the St. Rumi sample. So, yeah, I'm going to hold on to this. I'm actually, I'm also going to transpose it up another octave here using shift and up. Yeah, so that's in a more usable range for me. What's up, everybody? Oh, let me check in with the chat here. Talentocratic. Oh, buddy, thank you. Uh, hey, man. If I'm a good teacher, it's only because I learned from the best. That is sounding crazy good. What's, what's up? What's goody? What's up, Relia? How you doing, man? Hell yeah. Dude, the gang is all here. Let's fucking go. So, okay. So I'm going to save this instrument as just, like, pad. Cool. Awesome. Um, next up, I want to make a bass sound. So I'm going to make a bass out of the drums. Because I hate myself. So let's do it. Same deal. I'm going to go... <laughs> I'm going to choose a moment. I'm going to, I'm going to make a bass out of the snare drum. Because fuck it. And same thing. I'm just going to like crop the sample. Here we go. Let's do let's do like this. Let's crop it down. Let's set that loop. And as we change the length of the loop, you'll notice how the pitch changes. Also, I'm gonna bring the volume down. This is hell annoying. Um, you'll notice how the pitch changes. Kind of crazy. Um, really fun to mess with that too. You can actually automate that. My friend Cosmico Abdul in the chat um, was showing me this yesterday. You can change the length of the loop and you can actually automate this. So if I put this on one of my MIDI knobs here and I hold down a note, check out how like cool and glitchy this sounds. I don't know, kind of crazy. You can do some cool ass shit with that. Um, but that's not what we're here for. 
we are here for a bass sound. So. So I'm just bringing up the volume on my synth here so I can tune it. Sounds like that's right. Okay, bring the volume down. Cool. This is the sample. This is going to be the grain now that I use for... Hell yeah. For my synth. Okay, this is going to be a bass sound. Right? Yeah, it's going to be a bass sound. That's what I said. So let's pitch it down even more. Yeah, it's probably going to be pretty ridiculous sounding. Pretty good, pretty nice, stanky bass. Okay, so let's see here. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Well, first of all, we're going to play it down here. Jeez. a little bit of release there cool and then I'm gonna go into the filter and I'm gonna I want it to be sort of like funky and like resonant -y. so let's see what we can do here oh we're just oh it's just not gonna this has been happening to me I don't know have you guys experienced this where it's like sometimes I just engage the filter and it just like doesn't like there's just no sound that's been a fun Ableton thing this is a great advertisement for Ableton right now isn't it just hey like the filter just doesn't fucking pass sound sometimes super dope and one of my favorite things about Ableton is that it just doesn't work sometimes um well that kind of shits on the uh, the tutorial that I was going to do today <laughs> um let me see if adding an envelope changes anything here it does not let's go let's see if duplicating the track and then starting fresh does anything there we go okay so yeah, something's going on with Ableton where it doesn't like to work. Okay. All right, so basically, here's what I just did. We've got a filter, right? We've got a filter. This is just the the standard Ableton filter. I think this is like the default all the way open. Yeah, Ableton crashes one out of every... Yeah, like minimum one out of every 10 times. It's just kind of, you know... It teaches you patience. It helps you build character. This fucking program. That's so good. So I just forgive it. You know, it's like a dog that like pisses on your couch. It's like, you're just like, I hate you right now. And I'm really mad at you, but you're too cute. And I love you. And like, I'm never, I'm never going to be that mad at you. Cause you're just so great. That's how I feel about Ableton. All right. Nasty. Fuck yeah. So, <laughs> hey, listen, what a good boy. He's such a good boy. Yeah. All right. Let's get some. Let's get some funky shit going on. Kind of sounds like a fake slap bass from like an old synth. I'm also I'm gonna do the same trick here. Put the pitch around like five percent, maybe like a one second. around here all right let's let's call this like six hertz that's usually a good nice maybe seven something a little faster one more anxious yeah i like that let's raise that. sorry i'm just dialing in my preferences here Okay, cool. And then what I also want to do is I'm noticing that it's like re-triggering the envelope and the filter every time I play 
any note and it kind of has this it's got this weird quality to it where it just sounds like it's stuttering a little bit if i do runs so i can change that by opening up the glide here i'm going to set it to glide and then i'll mess with the timing as i play That's what I'm looking for. I'm liking that. Cool. Um, and then let's see if I can tune this filter here. So 534, what's 534 divided by 2? 534 divided by 2, 267. Hey, we found the frequency that this is riding at. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Awesome. So basically what we were doing is finding out how to set the filter to the frequency. That is the fundamental of the note that I'm playing. So that basically means that it's going to be when the filter is done going through the envelope and it settles on its sustained note, it's going to be exactly equal to the fundamental of the pitch that we're using, that we're playing. So hence why it gets a lot louder. It's actually just exaggerating the shit out of that frequency. That's already the most, um, the, the loudest frequency on that particular note that's being played. So it gives us a little bit more juice. I really enjoy doing that. Just just a, a beefier sound. I'm also going to set the... Ooh. Okay, so I might have... Yeah, so it sounds very different if I choose one of the other filter modes. So let's see. If there's a better... dude maybe that's so like 260 i don't know it's definitely not as pronounced but it allows us to add some drive which is nasty that's what that is it's nasty Cool. Let's actually cut back on that. Cool. All right, that's a decent sound. Cool. All right. So we got a pad, we got a bass. Let's go back to the pad. Nice bass. See if they're in tune with each other. Sounds like they're almost in tune with each other. That sounds a little better. Okay, cool. Great, so we've got some stuff. We've got some stuff to work with. I love it. All right, now, I have absolutely no idea what I'm actually going to turn this into here, so... Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of chopping now with the drum, with the drum part here. So I'm going to throw the snowy loop into this here simpler. I'm going to slice it up. So we've got all these different slices here. And that one kind of has like two hits on it. Awesome. I'm going to set a little bit of a fade in, fade out. It's pretty much the loop. Where are we? 
Okay, there's there's an idea for me here. Where are we? Okay, so I'm gonna start just like typing this in here. Okay, da da. Okay. Cool. Let's go a little bit faster here. Let's do something like that. And then your this little open hat here. Okay. Something like that. I don't know. Mess with the, let's mess with transposing this down a little bit. Let's see. Let's do a different snare here. Not there. Here. And we'll make these a little bit louder because they're on the two and the four. Pull these down. And we'll pull this down a little bit. Mess with these velocities here. Just want to make it a little bit more human. Um, Nathan, you can fast forward to hearing the full beat just by just by sticking around. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, take some sleeping pills or something and wake up later. Take a nap. That's probably the best way to, to fast forward time, honestly, is just to take a nap. Which, it's pretty late where you are, so maybe that, maybe that would work. I'll probably be working on this for another 30 to 40 anyway, so. So I'm going to get tired of hearing that after eight beats for sure, or eight bars rather for sure. So I know that I want to do a different beat here. So let's see what we got. So there's a hat. That's a hat. These are both hats, that's cool. Okay. Okay, interesting. So we've got hats. Let's see what kind of we Yeah, let's just do something that's pretty close to the original here. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going, where are we? Okay, that's, that's the pattern. Super simple. I'm just going to keep it crazy simple because I don't have too much time to get into it. So let's go into, oh yeah, let's do the draw mode thing where, boom. Um, I don't know if you guys ever do this, but it's so fun. Nope. It's like you can enter things using a step sequencer, basically. Just using the arrow keys, if, you're, if you hit B and you go into draw mode in Ableton, and you can just like 
you can see how there's like a little blue highlight here where the key is selected and then you just hit right and it pastes that down at the velocity that you played that key it's crazy um Yeah, so, yeah, boom, there it is, done. Yeah, of course, you can do it with chords too. You can do, I mean, you can do it with any MIDI that you're sending into Ableton. If draw mode is on, you just hold down what it is that you want to play and you just hit the right arrow key. And the cool thing is too, is that, I'm sorry, you can also, say we're up here, you can just hold it down and it's going to, like if you hold down the key that you want to press and then you just keep pressing the right arrow, it's actually going to hold down that note for longer. So that's how it usually works with chords when I do it. Um, super, super dope tip. All right. So I want to slow these, or I want to pull the velocity down for these hats. And then... Choose a different kick there. And then let's keep this to just a two bar loop here while we're editing. And I want to swing it a little bit, so I'm going to swing it a little bit. Let's go. This guy is going to be a lot of the off beats here, so. Let's go. Snare it a little up. Let's go every other snare. We'll choose the other one. Hell yeah, fuck yeah. Let's pull the snares early, just a little bit. These guys are also on the off beats, so I'm gonna choose those and this and yeah. Interesting. All right. So I'm actually, I'm just going to stick to this loop for right now. We got crop it and then, and I'm going to actually just choose from the groove pool here. No, that's not going to work for me. So I'm going to go everything that's on the off beats and I'm going to nudge it back take things that are on the eighth note off beats and nudge them a little bit too. And then everything that's on the, the two and the four, the snares. And then let's see how that grooves as a loop. Um, are you guys getting any, like, is this, is this cool? I hope this is like interesting and, and informative. Let me know if there's anything cause y'all are, uh, fairly quiet in the chat. So let me know if there's anything about this that, uh, you have questions about or anything like that. So there I have my two musically distinct sections already figured out for me in terms of the drum breaks um, that we're going to be using. So that's going to be my inspiration for the two different sections of the song. So we're going to start there. Cool. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm amazed at how much this is nothing like my workflow and how much I'm taking in from this. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I've, sick. I always feel like watching other producers, like you're always going to learn something, but it always helps to have that affirmation. So I appreciate you letting me know. Hell yeah. Um, cool. Cool beans. 
Well, I'm just gonna keep going with this. This is, to be frank, also very different from my normal workflow. Like I normally don't do stuff like this, but so I'm challenging myself to go a little bit outside of my comfort zone while I'm on stream. Personally, I think that's more fun. Secondly, I think it's good to create that sort of like volatility that you guys can see when I'm on stream. Like, yeah, sometimes I make some bullshit too. And it's cool to see what happens cool for me to figure out what happens when I'm starting to make something I'm like I don't fucking like this how do I recover from it too so I don't know all good challenges I'm glad you're getting something from it fuck yeah okay so let's see what's good with this all right yeah. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do this before. I meant to do this before. Let me um, let me fix it. So I was gonna do uh, this might help you hear me a little bit better. Check check. If I do check check, you can hear it. Is that that should be pulling down the audio a little bit. Check check. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's so it's just easier for me to talk about it. Okay. Cool. Um. Hmm. All right, so I can't just fucking I can't just like as sick as the sample is. It's like music producer code of honor that I can't just take the sample as is and not do something with it, chop it up or what have you. So, I'm going to show you how I chop samples. This is going to be a little fun little way of getting into the the chopping part. So, I've loaded up the full St. Rumi sample into its own fresh, simpler device here. I put it on slice mode, and then by default, it's gonna slice by transient. I'm actually gonna go down to manual slice. So, let's see here. Cool. So I've got the slices that are gonna come up on my keyboard or on my launch pad. And I'm just gonna start finding the places that I want to slice stuff. I'm also going to set it to gate, which is basically just means that when I release the key, it's going to stop playing the sample. And then I'll set the fade out to like 50 milliseconds, so it's a little smoother than just like a immediate cutoff. Sure, let's get some different stuff in here. Definitely want that little. This is a challenge for me to chop for sure. I'm used to stuff that's way less percussive, or like my taste is usually uh, samples that are way less percussive to build a song around, so this would be interesting. Got some of that like bell sort of sounding synth in the background too. That's kind of nice. Thank you. 
part's kind of cool too. Just that little, that could be something I could loop as well. So I'm going to duplicate that. Where are we? Basically going to set that to classic mode. Wait, why did that change? Oh, that's why. Duh. And I'm going to loop that. And set that to one. I don't need. Ooh, wait a sec. That's fucking cool. So yeah, what I did was I just set a loop. Uh, set a loop that was like the whole length of this like tail of this uh, bell sample that I wanted to use. And then if you change the loop amount, it like only loops part of the sample and then you can crossfade the, um, like the, the different sections of the loop. So basically what it does is it allows you to smooth it out. If I had no crossfade, it would be, you can hear that click, which can be really unsavory. This, your, your results are definitely gonna vary when you're using this method because some things you can loop pretty cleanly. Some things it's, it's really hard to find like the actual um, like loop settings to make it sound like a clean and sort of like natural uh, sound that's actually being held out. Sometimes you just kind of can't, sometimes you gotta fudge it a little bit, um, but yeah. That's the original pitch. Awesome. Um, what's up, Zeno? How you doing? Welcome. Just making a beat right now using only Ableton Simpler. If you put the LFO on in the square wave, it could be something very cool. Let's try that. I've, I honestly haven't tried that. I feel like that would be... What should we put that on, though? Should we put it on the pan? Because that's kind of fire. Damn, dude. That's pretty cool. I like never would have thought to do that. You could also do it on volume. Or if I set it to hertz. Yeah. Like this, uh, this like left right. Kind beats. What's going on, man? Welcome. Thanks for joining. Calling in from from Denton, Texas, right? Dude's a great producer. Met him a long time ago when I was on tour there with Flaming Ghosts. It's good, man. Thanks for joining. Um, four. Okay, anyway, I don't know how I'm gonna use this, but this is a cool, like, bell pad. No. Ooh, actually, so I just went back to the drums. I'm actually liking this with the fade out set kind of high. Keeps it tighter, which is kind of cool. Hell yeah, liking it. Okay, let's see. I'll keep it to the square wave. For the sake of Selaz's point. Yo, yo. All right. Um, 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 um. Oh, it's doing that thing again where it just doesn't work. 
You just turn on the filter and it's like, nah, uh, mm, I don't know. I don't feel like it. Maybe, oh, maybe it's because the LFO is on? That doesn't make sense. No. Hmm. Yeah, it makes no sense. What's up, Drips? Welcome, my bro. Thank you for joining. What's going on? How's your day? Okay, let's get down to business. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make a beat here. That's kind of sick. I can I can rock with that. What do we got? Let's call that the beginning of the loop. that the keys are just correct here. That is a, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the, this bass. I should probably just lay something down with it though. Just lay something down with it. Quit wasting your time. Maybe it just needs less like filter going on. Maybe it's just a rounder sound would be. Something like that. That could work. Let's see. Thank you. 
There's our loop. Sorry for taking a minute to get that. Done. And you know what? Let's let's pitch this up a little bit. It's getting a little bit too. Let's go to like E. Actually, that sounds way worse. Let's try D. Let's try some D. Cool. All right. Go a little bit more swung here. There we go. A little more swung. That one's good. and D, baby. I love the key of D. I'm using Ableton Live, as you know. This is Ableton Live 11. And I'm using only one sam only one device so far in Ableton. Oh, no, I guess I've got a gate. Well, I'm not even using that yet. So, yeah, only audio and then the simpler device is the only thing that is used to make this beat so far all right let's get on with it brand come on you're wasting these people's time come on come on we got a pad here let's see doesn't that doesn't like feel too right to me let me let me investigate here maybe it's just too busy let's see Drop it 
out for a second. deep it's kind of like it's yeah it's it feels very like drum machiney i guess i'm just using samplers so that's why That felt more like the loop there. These last two, that felt a little bit more. And that one's held out a little bit too long for my taste. Let's keep it like shorter here. These two, excuse me, let's just do that. This one too, I feel like it'd be a little bit shorter. Yeah. And then maybe the second time around, the chord changes a little bit. So it's what? It's a G minor. So, so if I do an F major over a G minor, that might sound kind of cool. Yeah, it's like a sus chord. I like that. F major over G minor. Always a great call. Let's, uh, let's throw some like um, some spread, some stereo spread on here. Also using simply. Yeah. Some little percussive, some little like melodic moments in there. Jam. Thank you. 
think I just like this one better, so I'm just gonna move it over there. And that all. Let's get it. That's the one. Okay, that needs to be swung. Might be too much. That might be too much. Still sounds like too much. all right so uh, i forgot to get rid of all of these because we're going to start fresh um but i want to throw some reverb on there and so i'm going to do it with uh probably hybrid reverb because i've been meaning to learn how to use this a little better recently <laughs> And I'm going to throw, all right, so now I'm going to get into a little tiny bit of mixing, even though I really probably shouldn't yet. But let's let's just get this effect sounding right. This is something I do a lot. This is why I love EQ3 so much, because it's just like super easy to get a nice like filtered sound. All you have to do is just dump the low and the high bands and just focus on the middle band. And you can set your filter steepness here depending on how severe you want it to be. But then, yeah, but you basically just clamp in on the frequencies that are important to you, and it can be a really easy way to get sort of a lo-fi effect or like a, you know, like a vintage sample sort of thing. Kind of tuck it in the background of the mix a little bit. So we got a section there. Let's see how it sounds. Maybe we want to throw a little bit of this bell pad onto reverb. All right, so I got to do something different already. As I said two sections.
right, so we gotta go somewhere from there. And I'm not sure that I'm still vibing with this patch or this uh, this pattern that I made before with the drums. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm not, but we'll see what we can do there. So we're in. So let's write a bridge. something cool we could do like a so this all right I'm gonna make like a, a short like two bar section here that goes from so we're like and then I'm gonna go up to here so this is like the the five of the key of D minor that we're in so this is like a an a7 sus4 and then I'm going to go little tritone substitution here. But how do I want to voice it is the question. Um, so let's see. I'm going to do a, like it's, so an A altered. There we go. So. I like that. Let's get that down. Okay, something like that. Um, not with that rhythm though. Or maybe we can just do this here. Let's see. I'm gonna this is this is cheating because this isn't two distinct sections but I want to make sure that we get to your guys's uh, sample challenge tracks so I'm gonna start to cut this short so that I can uh, so that we can get there <laughs> We can automate the uh, the LFO here. Let's do that. That could be cool. All right, so I'm gonna have to do that with a filter. So we're gonna load up an auto filter. I'm gonna set the rate to sixteenth notes. Yeah, and I want to set it to a square wave. And then I find that if you mess with the offset and put it up like a little bit less than 360, so between like 320 and 360, it like gives it a nice swing essentially. It pushes it after the grid like a little bit later. So it's like it's like dragging a little bit. Okay, cool. Don't need that. 
So I'm going to bring the frequency up from like here, like up here, and then like super quick at the end there. So let's see, whoops, see how that sounds. All right, so I need a little bit more here. And I don't want it to go completely up. Uh, okay, so that tail is giving me a little bit of an issue. So let's see what we can do here. Maybe shorten these notes a little bit. that to be so sudden so I'm gonna go do this and gradually release it there. matter of fact I'm gonna do this yeah better all right cool so that's giving me my little transition. I think I gotta, I wanna call it there cause I'm, I'm, I could keep working on this for a long time, but I don't want to. Um, I just wanna throw on some quick mixing uh, things and then I think we'll be good. So um, we'll take like five to 10 minutes to do a quickie mix and we'll move on. So y'all can actually hear some shit that y'all did the way that you guys flip these samples, which I'm super excited to hear. Damn, I also, this is probably the first time I've ever in my life made a beat using only simpler, like only samples and only two audio files too. That's freaking cool. I don't think I've ever done this before in my life. This is pretty sick. Hell yeah. Sorry, I'm just like high off what I'm doing right now. This is cool. I gotta do this more. Okay. Nice. All right. Like I said before, I'm a big fan of drum bus. Uh, I don't know if I love that on second thought. Eh, that sounds cooler. Okay, whatever. We'll move on from here. I can spend a million. Drum bus is just crazy. You can like chop out the transients and shit. Make it really dirty if you want. Dampen some of those high frequencies because it does get a little crunchy up there. That's the dry. This is the wet. So we'll mix it in. Thank you. 
let's widen it a little bit. Especially in headphones. It makes the bass really stand out. Uh, it gives it a little bit of width. I'm going to do a, a move. This is something I learned from my friend G Mills, G420 Mills. He may or may not still be in the chat. Probably isn't. Oh, wait. Well, let me catch up with what Rumi said. Drum bus is so great for messing with breaks before you chop them, dude. 100%. I, I, I wouldn't even necessarily think to do that, but that's super smart. I love to use it to mess with the transients and then flatten it and chop. Yeah, dude. Honestly, it's like a shortcut for, yeah, pumping like energy into a drum break that already has some like nice tails and reverb and stuff built into it because you can accentuate that quite a bit um, or take it out if you don't want those tails, um, which I think usually give drum breaks like all their character but sometimes you just want the individual hits and you can just mess with it before yeah that sounds that's hella smart hell yeah i'm learning from you guys fuck that's dope okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna side chain all of these using a gate my favorite from the drums No G simple drum loop. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna gate this, which basically just means instead of using a compressor. Yo, what's up, AJ Griffo Nine? Welcome, welcome. Glad you're able to make it. Um, hell yeah. So yeah, I I I like to side chain using the gate. I feel like it gives me a lot of control, which I really like. Um. So what I do here is, this is my standard gate setup. You'll see this, this flip switch is activated, and that basically means that any time the sound rises above the threshold, just like a compressor, it's going to duck the sound by this many dB. And you can set that with the floor control. Uh, and then you also have three stages of um, like time control. You have attack, you have hold, and release which gives you a little bit more control than a compressor um, in terms of how it shapes the, the nature of side chaining. So with that being said, I'm gonna set this up here. So you can see that's the gain reduction right there. And then I'm gonna set up this hybrid reverb to come back It's gonna go to, what is it, nine audio, yeah. So the hybrid reverb is on ascend, and then it's gonna come back into this group before it goes to the master. And in doing so, it's also gonna get smushed by this chain, this gate. Let's throw some effects on the mix as well. Classic, let's saturate it, why not? Drums are a little bit peaky for my taste. Let's see if we can dump a little bit more of that. High frequency. If not, let's just take a little EQ right up there. Let's get rid of that. Sweet. Cut some of that super low frequency stuff to begin with, and then I'll put this before the drum bus.
compress. Let's compress before we hit. The saturator. Just a little bit. Just, just a light touch. out in the mix a little bit better. Actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna um, compress the nuts out of it, but I'm gonna do it in parallel. And we're gonna see how that sounds. Definitely juicier. Let's hear how that sounds before. happy with that and then the last thing I want to do is for the intro where am I here we go cool I'm just gonna do a little bit of that let's just copy this over here Turn the device on here. Something like that. Let's actually pull that down a little bit. We'll pull back the mids. So we'll do like that curve with the low frequencies and with the high frequencies. We'll pull them up to about there. Could probably use like a crash or something there. I'm not going to get into that yet.
that's a beat. Beautiful. <laughs>